Okay, so I've made some progress with this radio. Um, I figured out that the paper backing was held in place with these little, like, cotter pins. I can just zoom in on that. Yeah, there we go. So these four little pins here were holding the back end place. That's, that's what you see on the back of the radio. The business end goes in here, and it went into these little holes here one two uh and then three and then four and there we go um so i just used a pair of pliers and pulled these little penis shaped clips out uh and put them aside and um i still can't get the back cover off because this knob is holding it in place as you can see here so i've tried pulling really hard on this and it's not coming off and um, twisting it pretty hard to the left or the right doesn't loosen it, so I'm not sure if I have to like actually unscrew this or figure out some other way. Maybe I just have to pull really hard or maybe kind of prise it off with, um, I don't know, pliers or something, or, or lever it off by pushing on it from the inside. Either way, the thing that I came here to do today was uh, to use this can of compressed air to blow most of the dust out. And I am wearing an N95 mask because I know there is a butt ton of dust in, he dust in here and uh, I don't want to breathe it. So here we go. cans running out but that is better all right let's continue this with a fresh can of uh, compressed air and a light this time oh this looks so nice now we can actually see inside the unit and i guess what i thought was dust or char all this time uh on the tubes was actually just dust um these look pretty good I do see the metal plates on the tubes, and I might actually be able to identify them now from this. All right, let's keep it going. Lovely. Yep, I'm glad I'm wearing my mask. Now let's hit the top of it. Try to get underneath some of the, underneath the base plate. And there's still a bunch of junk coming out. But that's the cleanest this thing has been in 70 years. Oh, wow. Look at that. My goodness. That is, that is some really, really old technology. Man, amazing. Amazing that it works as well as it did. Well, I discovered by accident one uh, unusual way to get into the radio uh, is to put it at the edge of a workbench and simply swivel this out of the way. Um, I still need to figure out how to cleanly disconnect this. Um, there's got to be a way to do it safely, but here's what it looks like. I'm certain this knob just pulls off, but it's probably just stuck on there from 70 years of, you know, oil probably seizing up. Anyway, let's take a look at the rest of the radio. So we have speaker part numbers. Uh, yeah, that looks like um, uh, that looks like a transformer of some kind. Yeah, that's the transformer. Um, and then we have down here, chassis number. Five, it looks like 5H64T. Okay. Then we have um, this guy, Zenith 22 2826 or 2S26, one of those two. 60 to 150 DC, a square symbol. 40 to 150 DC. Um, N, is that 
something n com negative. Oh, common negative, I'm guessing. Uh, and 303, 04540, and then uh, L26 or 126. I don't know what this is. Oh, you know what? It's it's a paper barrel. My guess is that's probably a capacitor. There's the top of it. I'm almost certain that's a capacitor. Let's keep going here. We have one tube. Boy, the paint is really coming off of these. It's hard to read them now. Um, Zenith. Wow. Something A G E three two two one something. Yeah, that's that's very difficult to make out. Uh, any identification on this tube over here is partially obscured by the fact that it's installed backwards. Oh, what is that? Five. Five zero six five or five zero C five. I want to say that's 50C5. Then, what is this tube over here? This one's a little easier to read. This one says 35W4. 35W4. All right, yep, 35W4. And then over here we have 322. One, one six or three two two H six possibly. It looks like three two two one one. Yeah, it's kind of hard to make these out because the paint has fallen off. And then there's one more over here. Well, this is almost impossible to make out. You can see the Zenith logo and made in something, but any identifying markers on the tube. Uh, I can see half of it right there. You can see the or the brown border of the tube mark uh, part number, but can't see it from this angle. Anyways, we got five tubes in here. Uh, here's the tuning apparatus. Um, so mechanically, this uh, rotates this way to tune to the lower frequencies, and it rotates this way to tune to the higher frequencies. So I can at least manually tune the radio now. And then the connection in the front is uh, mechanical. that connects the knob to the actual rheostat here. Um, and then, of course, we have like what looks like heat sinks. There's something sticking out the top of that. I'm not sure what these are. And then there's some wiring going to them. And, of course, there's the voice coil or the speaker. And it looks like there's a small tear in it. That would explain why it's been buzzing but it's not entirely unexpected for something that's 70 years old. Um, so that's it. So yeah, this is a, a Kona Brown 1950 uh, radio with chassis number 5H64T is in Tango. Um, so this is slightly different from the US market again because it has a shortwave option. So I don't know how uh, rare this thing is, but I'm guessing it was either a secondary model that they sold or they only sold this outside of the US where shortwave was more popular. This one originally came from Guatemala. Um, so yeah, that's the radio.